I've just lit my wood burning stove. We're in autumn now, it certainly feels like that. The end of August is coming. It's wet and miserable outside and uh, I've got myself nice and warm here by the Essie. The weekend is coming as I film this and I shall be cooking shortly. Some raw ingredients, been to the farm shop and um, cooking something for myself and the lovely Julia. And whilst I'm waiting for her to arrive, cheers some nice clean water. I thought I'd talk to you, I'm hoping the camera battery last, um, a bit philosophically on this time. Now I know I made a, a video fairly recently, oh, you'll have to excuse me, I'm gonna light my pipe as well. Um, I, I recorded a video fairly recently about is it age or is it wisdom that takes us to a point where we start to reflect on things in perhaps a different way. I was listening to a podcast the other day talking, um, some philosopher was, was simply saying that when you're young, you know, kids and young people, they, uh, whether they're playing or whether they're at work, when they stop those things, they get bored very easily. I thought that was interesting. But as you get older, you don't get bored quite as much. You're quite happy to sit and reflect uh, and to sit and do nothing, to, to think about life, to perhaps just sit and cogitate, smoke your pipe if, if you partake, partake, or sip a brandy or have a pint or just sit in the pub and, and not do very much, basically, and not do very much. I was also watching something else. I, I try not to watch too much. I much prefer to sit and read quietly, which is something that I very much love to do, as you probably know. But every now and again, you know, you break the silence with something. And this other one, again, was a bit philosophical. I think I'm turning uh, into, uh, into philosophy for answers. Maybe, maybe you are. But this one was talking about how do we react to things that don't go our way? Do we get cross? Do we get more stressed? You're in a stressful situation and, you know, say you're in a traffic jam and it's gonna make you late or you're driving along uh, in your conveyance or you're, you're traveling, I ought to say, in your conveyance and the, the, the mode of transport in front of you, the car in front of you, the automobile, you've gotta be so careful these days in how you phrase things. Uh, because of the legalese phrasing of things. But anyway, let's not get sidetracked. The automobile in front of you is driving slow and you're going, oh, for goodness sake, come on, the, the limit is 40 here and you're going 20 and I, I, and I want to get somewhere. And you start to get yourself stressed. You, you start mentally taking it out on the person in front of you. You, you. you get yourself into a tizzy. Or other events, you know, the lights are all in... <laughs> It, it's, it's, there's a lot of car references here, but the lights are against you and you say, oh, for goodness sake, is every light going to be against me? Or you've gone to buy something uh, or order it online and the last item is already gone. You know, these sort of basic everyday and nu nuisances, your lighter runs out of, of uh, fuel or you haven't got enough tobacco for your pipe, whatever these things are. Excuse me one moment. And you get, you get annoyed, don't you? You're waiting for the bloke to speak and he's smoking his pipe and he's pausing. Have we lost patience in this modern world? How do we react to things? My main concern though, was that we are, we're in a strange world, are we not? Careful now, just don't wanna, tip the uh, ash all over the floor. We're in a strange world, aren't we? Regular viewers will know that I'm often talking about 5G towers that are going up everywhere. I'm often thinking about the lawful intent of the government, things like council tax, is that even legal? Should we be paying it? And the way it's collected, is the money actually going to the local community or is it uh, being extracted by the government and sent overseas to all sorts of different places? 
maybe to start war and things like that. And, and should we be paying it? How do we push back? Are the utilities already paid for? Are, we, are they double dipping? All of these sort of things. And then, of course, you know, how do you deal with the police if they stop you? How do you deal with the bailiffs if they come knocking on your door? How do you deal with um, bills or invoices that you feel you can't pay? Or if you are out of work and you just can't make ends meet? How do we deal with all of that? And, and mostly we get put into a, a, a place of anger, frustration, fear. And... and we're not really trained, are we, to sort of deal with these, of these things that life dishes up, like trying to keep your pipe going. And the, the podcast I watched, the guy said, he said, really and truly, you've got to ask yourself, in all of these situations, can you do anything about it immediately? You know, you're, you're late for work. You're stuck in your car. You've got to wait. You've got to wait for the lights. Sure, you've got to acknowledge these things, but somehow you, you need to be able to calm yourself and not react. And I think that's true in the situation that we're in with the, the fear mongering. We're watching the telly, not that I watch, I haven't got a telly, or we're taking in the, the news and we're reacting to it as if, oh my goodness, what is the point of living anymore? It seems so awful. The, the government has got anti-human policies. Um, everywhere you go, you feel like you're being trapped, that you feel that there is a corporation takeover. They're taking everything from us and we feel that, and we're in this state of fear. And how do we deal with that? And, I, and in many ways, I think that's, that's what they want us to be in. They want us to react and we, we haven't found necessarily the tools that we can actually laugh in the face of adversity, adversity even. We can't laugh at ourselves and the situations. We find that we're, we're so involved in that situation that it, it's difficult to take a back step and look at ourselves as if we could climb out of the goldfish bowl for a moment and look at the situation and go, does any of this really matter in the great scheme of things? Obviously, 5G towers going up to radiate our brains does matter. But are we going to let these things that we can't immediately control make us unhappy, make us fearful, make us lose our vibrations? And this is something that I think is important for us to face and, and ask these questions. How do we respond to this? I know this is very meandering and philosophical and, and I'm not giving specific answers. I appreciate that. But somehow we do need to raise ourselves above this because I think, as many people have said, this is a spiritual war. This is a spiritual attack. And, and I think many ways that we deal with this is by stepping out of the situation, almost laughing at the situation, looking for the positive. As one door shuts, another one opens. We need to be open to see it. For example, at the moment, I've been demonetized from YouTube. There's no income coming in. And you could say, oh my goodness, what am I gonna do? Um, it's, it's dreadful, but I know that if I stay in that state of down, depression, worry, um, frustration, then I won't see the opportunities. And the opportunities will come as they will come for you, wherever you are and whatever situation you're in. We need somehow to remain calm, not get stressed, open our eyes, open our hearts, give gratitude for those things that we do have, if there's a roof over our head, if we're able to get a meal a day, if we're able to smile at another, if we're able to share a cup of coffee with somebody, if we're able to do things that other people perhaps aren't able to do, we, we, we must hold on to that gratitude. But more than that, open our hearts, open our minds and know that this 
all these myriad of silly situations that we get ourselves worried in is not going to last. I, I absolutely positively believe, and this is just my opinion, of course, that we're going to win all of this. We're in this very bumpy ride. We're feeling it. And, and in many ways, we've got to step outside from the stage where we're, we're involved in it all and it's all in our face and everything. Step out and know that actually this is just a game. It's just a game and the more we get het up, worried, concerned, fearful, the more we're too involved in the game and it will carry on. But the more that we step away from that and try and stay calm, mark it, oh yeah, this is happening, okay, but stay calm, the quicker it will end. Now, I know people will think this is just absolute hogwash. They'll say, but you know, you've got to fight back. But I think half the time, as many of my guests have said on the show, the pen is mightier than the sword. We don't need to get into the, uh, into the boxing ring and beat each other up. We can do this from the side calmly, efficiently. And I think things like the government and the legal system we can defeat them very easily and calmly by the use of our pen, our intellect and our, our love and our vibrations. And knowing that we will achieve joy at the end of it. That's what I believe. And I don't know whether that's age, wisdom or complete poppycock, but it helps me get through these turbulent, turbulent times. I'd be interested in your thoughts.